Good evening, everybody, and welcome to a live special Inside the Issues edition of Tucker Carlson tonight. I'm obviously not Tucker. I'm Tammy Bruce, filling in for that uh, fabulous man during his fishing vacation. I hope he's having a great time, uh, and it's an honor to be filling in for him this evening here and to be with all of you on this Friday. The full autopsy of Jeffrey Epstein has been released. Does it bring us any closer? To solving the mystery, if it is a mystery, of his death, uh, giving us a little bit of insight here, as he does. Fox medical contributor Dr. Mark Siegel joins us now. Dr. Siegel, thank you, sir. Hi, Tammy. Good uh, to see you. Look, this worldwide speculation, uh, considering the nature of what had gone on, the fact that he was able to die in some fashion in, the, in that prison, one of the highest profile people in the world, uh, and yet he seemed to manage to pull it off. We now have the autopsy. They say unequivocally it was a suicide. Uh, do you buy that? And it, are you comfortable with that finding? I think we have to start right there. I think the New York City medical examiner was very definitive on this, that it was a hanging, that it was a suicide. I think we have to accept that. That's quite definitive. It doesn't answer other questions like why he was taken off suicide watch. Was he actually attacked by the, the cellmate before, before uh, that, around the 26th of July? Whether... Uh, he, you know, why he was unobserved, why he was in a cell by himself, why right. he had a bunk bed in there, why he had regular sheets. It, it's, but, a, but, it's like a, a perfect storm of every single thing you'd want in order to pull that off. You know, and so that makes you wonder how that happened. People yes. don't just fall asleep. Cameras are not just turned away. But I'll tell you one thing that did come out today. If this was a suicide and a hanging, and I am accepting that, mm -hmm. that means that it was very forceful. Mm -hmm. Because for those bones to break, and we've been talking about this, right. for that hyoid bone around the Adam's apple sure. to break, for the cervical vertebra to break, mm -hmm. you have to have a pretty pronounced force, almost sure. like what they used to do in the 1800s when they dropped you through the right. floor. Now, so and, and, and this is why you're not supposed to have bunk beds in a cell. Uh, and because that allows you at least some height to do that. And then, of course, in this process, and many people, it's very strange. We, we don't think about it because our, not, our lives, thank God, don't have to involve something like that. Where you do manage to do that, use your own weight, you pass out. Even the weight then as a result of a sort of a dead body pulls you further down and finishes that act. Uh, and, and is there anything that you would have uh, expected to see if it wasn't suicide that was missing? Well, any other sign, any other evidence? Yes, that's a very good point. So one of the things they would have been looking for is signs for other signs of a struggle or bruises on the body or something about how the neck was. But, you know, look, I talked to a vascular surgeon, a trauma surgeon, who said this amount of fractures in the neck is unusual for hanging. So you have to envision it as literally he flung himself off of this bunk bed and with, with a lot of force. You know, and, and, I, and I have to look at it that way right now. It's less likely than what I was expecting. In, in other words, that, well, but, let's but, remember, but, it, but it's certainly possible. It's 11 feet but off. Let's, but even forget the height. Remember Kate Spade, you know, rest, rest her soul, used a scarf and the doorknob on her bathroom door. Right. No height whatsoever. Right. This is a, Epstein, a 66-year-old man, uh, where the indications are the older you get, of course. Bones break uh, more easily. That the bones break more easily in men and women. And it, certainly if you're doing something deliberately to do injury to, to your neck. And he was a large man. He was tall. He wasn't small. The weight then becomes even more serious uh, when you lose consciousness. And look, uh, if uh, as for those of us who've gone through someone knowing someone who's committed suicide, you know that if they really want to do it, they're going to do it. But in this case, this is what's remarkable is that there were uh, allegedly now this may we may find that there were cameras. But some of the other evidence is the medical examiner responsible for asking or knowing if there was video evidence of someone going in the cell, if there it, would, would they look at the context of the uh, surrounding That's so environment? That's so important, Tammy. What you're saying is so important. That is what, 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 what a medical examiner has to do. It's not just the cause of death. It is all of the circumstances okay. around, whether it was enabled, whether it wasn't. I want to spend a second here talking about what a psychiatric disgrace this is. Yeah. Because someone is on suicide watch. I don't care what the reason. You don't take them off suicide watch, put them in an un unobserved area where they can kill themselves. You might transfer them to a psych hospital. You might put them in a prison ward. Yeah. There's so many a other ways. Of, you need observation and treatment. Absolutely. A lot of questions and what seems to be a somewhat corrupt dynamic throughout our entire government. Dr. Siegel, thanks for joining Great to me. See you, Tim. I appreciate it. Earlier today, another one of our medical experts had some very interesting things to say about Epstein's autopsy. You don't break vertebrae in a suicidal hanging uh, in which the scenario is a leaning into. If they tell me he hurled himself down, fine. 
arthritis. And they're telling me that he was just kneeling down and he broke the hyoid bone and the cervical vertebrae. No way, with all due respect to the fine forensic pathologist there at uh, the N- NYC a medical examiner's office and my colleague who was an observer, I'm sorry, I do not buy that. And that was, uh, some of you might recognize that voice, Dr. Cyril Wecht earlier today. Jen Berenger is a forensics, a forensics ex- expert. She joins us now. Jen, thanks for coming by. You know, this is so much, there's a lot of politics involved, a lot of sinister actions involved, uh, medical studies involved, right? That the nature of the horrible dynamic of suicide. Uh, listening to Dr. Wecht's, uh, he was very suspicious about things that a lot of other people are agreeing on when it comes to the expectation of certain bones breaking, et cetera. What's your take on what we found out today? I think a lot of people are going to be a little bit uncomfortable from the forensics community. As you've discussed with a lot of people, uh, it's very unlikely and very rare to have the hyoid bone being broken on a continual compression of air suicidal hanging. It happens often when they're doing it from a height, sometimes when they jump, things like that. But to have the hyoid bone break when you're compressing it yourself, it's very rare. So I understand the discomfort, Mm -hmm. but as you were just mentioning with your other expert, uh, it happens that the medical examiner has a lot more information than we do when they take the manner of death into consideration. So it may be the case that the medical examiner has seen a tape perhaps from the prison cells where there was no one else in there with him. And if if they have seen something like that, then they know for certain that this was a suicide. And so the murder mystery is at some point gone at this point. Yes. I mean, you know, Americans, we all get used to these TV shows, right? The, the, The CIS shows, the forensic shows. We love them. And we get this sense that there's always going to be some kind of evidence that's going to give us the answer within an hour. Uh, In this particular kind of case, and I I asked Dr. Siegel about this, uh, but when it comes to if if there had been a struggle and an assault, that really would have been apparent, right? When you're looking to, to exclude other information that you might look for to eliminate that this was a homicide. That's absolutely right. Of course, they did mention that were multiple bones were broken, and that is that did sound suspicious to me yesterday, but the fact that they've come in with not an undetermined manner of death, but in fact, a manner of death that says suicide, they must know something else. There must be other evidence that are pointing to that. And as you mentioned, a lot of times you, you have a lot of bruising and other things like that that they're taking into consideration. Yeah, you know, and while the cameras, I think we still need to wait for more information about which cameras were actually operating, but at least at the, at not a, a, to indicate if anybody was like going past his cell, but perhaps there were cameras watching these guards sleep where That's there right. was proof that any other individual in that area was in fact found in a particular place. Uh, And and the medical examiner would care about something like that as well, about access to to uh, to the deceased. Absolutely. They're going to take everything into consideration when they before they have the manner of death. And of course, so it, the murder mystery is somewhat solved, but the the legal issues here are staggering, frankly. I mean, definitely, I can't imagine that the family is not going to sue the prison system at this point because there was so much going on that perhaps shouldn't have been going on or vice versa, perhaps. Yeah. You know, one of the silver linings here is that there's now a lot of focus on what happened here. And uh, clearly, New York's going to have to deal with that. And so is the federal government. Jen, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I appreciate it.